Hi everyone, Jean Lurson here. So this week I want to um, experiment with brusho, something I've never used before, but I've watched some uh, demonstrations of this on YouTube recently. It seemed like a great way to create more texture in your watercolors and I love uh, creating textures in my watercolors, as you know. The reason I've never tried brusho before is that I found the colors a little too bright and garish. But I decided to go and have a look at the colors available. And I, I did buy some that I like and some that I don't like. And these are the ones that I like because they're not so bright. Um, and I'm going to, to um, show you two ways that I've discovered to use them. Um, which gives a different result depending on how you activate the brusho. Um, the colors that I've chosen are moss green, gray, and dark brown. Now, the gray is very interesting because, well, it, 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 this applies to a lot of the brushos. When you um, activate them, it doesn't just have a, a single color. It breaks up into... Uh, different colors, which could be very useful in the landscape. And I also have gamboge, um, which just is a, ni is, it's a nice yellow and not too bright. So I'm going to show you how I experimented with them. And so I'm just putting down some of the four colors, actually, uh, the uh, moss, the dark brown, the moss green, new gamboge, and the gray, and just spattering it on dry paper. Uh, this was my first experiment and I wanted to see what type of results I could get with my spray bottle that leaves droplets on the paper. You do have to be pretty careful when you're spraying that you don't uh, overwater uh, because it, it lo you lose the effect of the multicolors um, and it dilutes the brush a little too much. So it's like half sprays with the spray bottle that, that leaves droplets on the paper. And then I just took my um, dagger brush, the back of my dagger brush, and just dragged some stems through because I was doodling and I was just seeing what type of effects that I could get um, with this, uh, with, the, with the brush -o and um, how I could use it um, with my watercolors in watercolor in my watercolor landscapes, um, just adding some more brusho. Uh, it's it because this is new to me. I uh, need I'm experimenting with how much brusho one needs to put down, and you don't need a lot, but. It is nice if you've added too much water, you can go back in and just add more brusho to the overwatered area. Um, one thing I want to mention is that um, this uh, that brusho once it's dry is permanent. That's something to keep in mind when you um, are adding it to your watercolors. So uh, while it's still wet, you can. Uh, play around with it. You can lift some of it. It, it won't lift it back to the white paper, but uh, you can lighten it. Um, later on, I used some black and I within with the watercolors, and um, it was too dark, and I did lift some of it, and you'll see that. So here I'm just playing around with the uh, dagger brush and basically doodling. Now I'm going to show you by totally wetting the bottom here and this is another way to add brusho that gives you a totally different effect. I think starting off with the dark brown you can see that it just it disperses and creates these bursts um, which I'm not terribly fond of in a landscape. It could look really nice in a floral painting but um, I'm going to play around with this because I'm not uh, totally keen on these bursts in the landscape. It, 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 dra it 
grabs your eyes straight to to them and I, I don't want that I just want to um, get some subtle effects with the brush -o. so um, I've added a couple of different colors and I'm just uh, wetting my brush and dragging some of the bursts uh, through the water and um, I think this actually uh, gives me a better result uh, in, in a landscape. Now you see here I did actually have um, too dark, I, I added too much brush and it came out a little too dark and so I've lifted some of it but it definitely does not lift back to the white of the paper. And I'm adding some watercolor, some burnt sienna uh, into the brush -o and just experimenting to see how that how they integrate and um, what we can do and I'm lifting some of the dark area and I'm going to take some um, opaque orange and just spritz it on with the toothbrush and sort of light, lighten some of this dark area where I put on too much brush -o. And I'm going to take some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and do the same with the toothbrush. And I probably spat it on too much white, so I'm just going to lift some of it. And, and basically, I'm just doodling here and I'm trying to see what type of effects I can get with the brush. -o. And it's a lot of fun to just experiment like this. And, this is what you have to do uh, to learn about these different mediums that you can use with watercolors and I'm quite excited about this. I think I could uh, really uh, incorporate this uh, quite successfully into my landscapes. While I was doing this I was thinking about how I could incorporate it. I uh, took a photo recently so this is the perfect type of picture that you could use for this technique with these tangled branches and you could create some really interesting textures here. So if you enjoyed this demonstration, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.